Hi Virgo, my name is Alyssa and welcome to Eclectic Duality. Hi Virgos, this is going to be a reading for the sign of Virgo for the month of May. But as usual, keep in mind that energy is fluid, time is an illusion, roles can be reversed, and this may not be your story. And that's okay, there's so many amazing readers out there, one of them will resonate with you. All right, Virgos. So when I tapped into your energy, I actually saw, a, a, I basically got an image or a scene that played out in my head that was very specific, okay? For some of you, I actually imagined that you were laying in bed and there was someone wrapped around you or maybe they were holding you or you were holding them. And there was just this feeling of peace and calm and warmth, you know, with you being so close to this person. There was something about it that just felt right, felt complete. And it was a feeling that might have been a bit alien to you, Virgo. And instead of just enjoying that feeling of calm and peace, I almost felt through that that quiet that positive quiet that you were starting to panic and for some of you this has to do with you know basically this fear of the other shoe dropping you know waiting for the other shoe to drop wondering when it's all going to go to crap and you're going to lose it that's how some of you you know might feel when that anxiety that that panic kind of sets in and for another group of you it's just that this feeling is so alien it's almost like you're trying to take this emotion and analyze it in a very logical almost mathematical way it kind of reminds me of the reading i did for you guys last month i think it was called when one plus one equals three <laughs> I think it's something like that where it's just not computing, but you're trying to make logical sense of why this works, why this person comforts you in this way. There's something about it that you just don't expect, Virgo. Now, that's, it's not, in all cases, it's not specifically a person who makes you feel this way. It could be a situation yeah, that makes you feel this way that's a situation that's very positive very calming it could be an opportunity that comes in that makes you feel stable a career it's something that is just it just feels wonderful virgo and you feel more at peace than you've been in a while but like i said for some reason that feeling of panic is setting in because that feeling is just it's not something you're used to all right virgo let's start trying cards here what can my Virgo people expect for the month of May? Ooh, cards are flying out. So that was way more, well, not way more cards, but the way that flipped out, I think this is going to be somewhat of an exciting month for you, Virgo. Either that or it's going to just have a lot going on. I'm going to push these up here so you can see the cards a little better. <clears throat> So there's, Virgo, there's someone who you might want to reach out to, or maybe you have wanted to reach out to them in some way, or there's some kind of action that you wanted to take towards someone, but for some reason you're waiting until the very last second. It's almost like if someone, sh <laughs> it's like if you have a play, okay, and the curtain is about to fall, it's almost about to be the end of the final act. And then you rush in as the curtain's falling to make your move. It's something like that where it's just very close. It's like arriving right before the sun sets. Like if the sun sets and everything's the end, you arrive just as the sun starts to set. You know, it's something like... You wait until your last possible second in order to and extend an offer to someone. And not only do you wait till the last second, you rush in at full speed. You might take this person off. You, you might catch this person off guard a bit. Um, 
And I think the reason you do it is because you didn't plan on, you didn't plan on giving this person this offer. You actually thought you were just going to walk away from them. But for some reason, when you walked away from them, there was this feeling of loss, this feeling of sadness, almost like you felt like you were the one left out in the cold because this person that was on your mind, instead of, you know, seeming like they took it in a very kind of sad way or they wallowed, instead you see them being very happy, very fulfilled, very busy. And there's something about it that makes you sit back and go, I, this person is a little bit more enriching than I thought they were. Something like that. Something like, wow, this person has many more depths or many more layers than I realized that they had. And the more I learn about them, the more of those layers I peel back, the more that I want to know more, the more that I'm intrigued by this person, the more I like this person is kind of what I'm feeling here, Virgo. But I basically see, like I said, you didn't send that message. And so you're just going to charge in instead of leaving, which was your initial reaction to do in regards to this connection. You're going to rush in and offer something at the le last second. Like, honestly, I almost I don't necessarily think this will happen for you guys, but it just once again, an example that popped in my head is when they used to say, um, what do they say? Does anyone have any objections or do they want to forever hold their peace in weddings? I don't know exactly how they say that. And someone goes, I object. <laughs> that's kind of, that's kind of the, the energy that I'm getting here that your loved one is getting married and you run into the church or wherever they're getting married. And as the priest says, does anyone object to this union? You say, I object. <laughs> And then you two right off into the sunset together. Well, I don't know the outcome yet. But it's basically, without all the drama, it's just something like that in terms of timing. Um, I think the reason why you really considered leaving this connection behind before is you felt chained to something. You know, with this devil card here showing up in between the eight of sword, or sorry, the... um six of swords and the two of wands in reverse, it makes me think that you felt you had no other choice, Virgo. You had no options here is what you felt like. You felt like you were chained to your fate or chained to your career, chained to your circumstance. There was something like that and you couldn't quite put it into words to this person. So you were just going to duck out gracefully. And I'm getting a lot of throat chakra issues with this pile. Um, I'm having a hard time with my words, which honestly, I had a long day at work. So it could have to do with that too, to be honest, honeybees. But that could be your energy as well, as you couldn't put into words, you know, the, the feelings you had about this person. Uh, you couldn't put into words the... You basically, you wanted to tell them why you had to walk away, but you just couldn't find the correct words for it. But then as you're getting ready to walk away, as you pull back into your own energy and start to cut ties, like I said, there's this switch in your mind when you feel the absence of them. And it's something that really surprises you. All right, Virgos, that's interesting. Okay, so I'm trying a new format for my monthly readings. I felt like we weren't getting into the nitty gritty when I was just doing my general messages for you guys. So I really want to pull some cards for a couple of the main areas of your life that really impact your month. So we're going to start with your career, your finances, your stability, home life, a couple messages in regards to that. I think with this, you're going to be asking help from others, Virgo. It's very possible that in the situation you were in financially, you know, in regards to your stability, your home life, you were trying to go at it alone, but you felt that you really weren't able, you felt trapped. You felt like you weren't able to move forward, weren't able to get done what you need to get done, weren't able to pull in the money that you needed to pull in. And that was just, you just felt, it was a pretty 
stressful feeling, um, especially for you, Virgo. Stability is is pretty high on your list of important things in everyday life. And I think this is basically you going, okay, I can't go at this alone. I got to reach out to a friend or reach out to a specific someone. Maybe it's reach out to my boss and say, look, this is my situation. I know that there's a lot going on right now, but is there any way that I could pull in some more work? I will do anything. That's the kind of energy I'm getting, Virgo. And I, I really, let's get a couple more cards here. I want to see how that works out for you. Because I basically see you basically reaching out and just letting someone know that you could really use help. So I basically see that you you come to somebody and you just lay it on the table everything you're dealing with, everything that's going on. And this is someone, this is interesting. This is someone, this might be someone fairly new in your life um, that you ask for help from. It might be someone who's offered you help in the past, but you just didn't take them up on it. But this is not someone you know very well, which is interesting. I mean, it could be a boss, especially if this is a newer job that you were in, but there's someone you're going to be asking for help. You're going to explain everything that's going on, how things feel unfair. And it might, you might actually express a lot of emotions and frustration with what's going on. But I basically see that this person's going to help you. And it's going to help alleviate a lot of that anxiety and stress. It might not even be a huge sum of money. It might not be this, you know, huge gesture. They'll be able to give you what they can give you. But it's something that I think is really going to alleviate some of that pressure, which is awesome. All right, Virgo, the next area we're going to look at is your connections and relationships with the people around you. But this is platonic. So your friends, your family, your coworkers, your boss, your followers, if you have a following, basically all the platonic relationships. How are you going to jive with other people? Mixing up my cards here. You're going to drive really well with people in the month of May, Virgo. You really are. I basically see that you are giving, you know, your end. It's just, I mean, the sun is shining down upon your relationships, okay? The sun is probably the most positive card in the whole deck. So with that and the ace of pentacles in reverse and the five of cups, I think this is you you know, not giving into sadness anymore, not giving into, there might not have been exactly sadness, but maybe there was this kind of dark energy around you, this dark cloud where you just felt down, you just felt frustrated, you weren't feeling very positive or hopeful about the future, you weren't feeling very stable, you were feeling very ungrounded, and, you know, this is basically saying that in the month of May, all that's going to end. You're going to have a brighter disposition. You're going to be more positive. You're going to see that things are going to be okay. And I basically see if there was any conflict going on between you and other people in the month of April, you're going to move out of that in the month of March with this Five of Wands in reverse and the Two of Cups here. So this could be a couple things here. This could be you building up strength stronger, more lasting connections with people around you. Now, it doesn't even have to be physically around you because obviously a lot of us are in quarantine and in isolation. Um, but this actually, even though we're talking about platonic relationships here, this could be talking about romance a bit as well. You might find romance with someone you consider a friend at this time. So that's kind of interesting. But if it's not talking about romance, which it doesn't have to, this is just talking about you building up, you know, healthier connections, stronger connections with the people around you in a really positive way. So that's really beautiful, Virgo. All right. So now we are going to get into romance. So what can Virgo expect in the month of May in regards to romance? Ooh, a lot. Did you see that? Almost the whole deck wanted to fly out. Okay, 
What do I say about that, Virgo? I have this could be the one. You've already met the romantic partner you seek and very soon clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. Um, Virgo. And then a lot of cards. Okay, we're taking them. We're going to take them because why not? Let's take a thousand cards. Now I want to know. So, Virgo... I feel like this goes with the story. This person is completely within your reach and the person that's on your mind, and this is if you're single and you are thinking about someone right now, and I basically, like I say, I said, I saw you rushing in at the last possible second towards this person. And honestly, I think this was, this is reciprocal. I think that this person, either one, they're waiting for you to extend that offer um, or two, they feel the same as you, but they just honestly started giving up on this connection because you didn't seem like you were that interested. And actually, I think it was more number two. I don't think they were just sitting there pining after you. And I think that's part of the reason why you took a double look at them. Um, but I think that this person, um, really decided to move on because it didn't seem like you were feeling the same way, which is actually a pretty healthy attitude. They weren't letting their life stop, you know, because someone else didn't want to give them energy. So let's see here. Let's play out some of these cards here. These thousand cards. So I have the getting to know each other in reverse healing family issues, engagement, and then express your love in reverse. Did you have some things going on with your family in the month of April, Virgo? Is that what held you back? Did you have struggles in your family life? If you're single, um, it could be that there was a lot of things going on with your family that really occupied your attention. Uh, you could have been worried about family. Or this could be you working through... Okay, for some of you, the reason why you're so hesitant to go off into this situation and why I think I felt that feeling of panic, you know, when you do go towards it, is maybe the family dynamic you were raised into wasn't the healthiest now that can take that can manifest in many different ways it could be that one or both parents didn't set you know a healthy example it could be that you know there was just a lot of things that were really challenging growing up whether you lived in poverty or not or like i said it could be you know maybe one parent wasn't present and that really affected you but there's something you know to do with your family that really needed to be healed and worked through before you can move forward in this kind of relationship and honestly i think you guys are still working on it even after you move into the relationship but you're not going to ever feel well i don't want to say it that way you are probably not going to ever find, you're not going to be at ease until you heal those issues, okay? So no matter how wonderful this relationship might be, it's not going to be truly fulfilling until you heal the traumas or those um, blockages within yourself. Um, so with this next line here, I have trust, pay attention to the red flags, chemistry and playfulness. So I think that's going to be the general energy of what you're going to be trying to build with this other person in the month of May. But with the pay attention to the red flags, I don't think that's really referring to them. And that's more referring to your own triggers. So it's really important, I think, in the month of May, when you're feeling that panic, that you analyze what caused that trigger in the first place. Because once you know, you know, what is causing you to feel that, like what, if, it might be even as simple as a word, a sentence, a very specific touch. It could be many things. And once you analyze that, in many cases, you can start to release that. You can start letting that go. And if it's something that you're still not able to fully 
release, then at least it's something you can explain to your partner so that they can understand, you know, what is a little too difficult for you at this time. Communication is so important. So with this, I think this is saying it is better to communicate those triggers than let them fester. And then at some point, you'll probably end up having some kind of you know, anxiety attack, or you might lash out at them not meaning to just because because you feel like you've been pushed too far. But Virgo, I basically see this is a really positive energy for moving forward into something new for sure. All right, Virgo. So before I close out this reading, I'm going to get a couple cards from the submerged deck here. Sorry, now my uh, fridge decided it's going to be super loud. I think that wanted to come out. We're going to take that and that. Find peace in nurturing the flowers during the summer, and you can only wear a mask until it doesn't fit you anymore. This makes a lot of sense to me, Virgo. So with that anxiety, that stress that you might be feeling, you know, in May, because of the calm and the peace around you, one of the best things you can probably do for yourself is to get out into nature a bit. You are an earth sign, so you're probably going to feel more grounded when you walk out into nature. So for some of you, the best thing you can do is take off your shoes and walk into your front yard or your backyard or onto your porch, onto your balcony, whatever you have, and just feel the soil under your feet, you know, just feel the wind, you know, touching your skin, sit down on the grass and just sit in the sun or lay in the sun, things that are still practicing that social distancing, but you're getting that fresh air you need, you're getting that sunshine, you're getting the earth around you, you know, to kind of help balance you. So those things might be really good things to try when you feel, you know, that anxiety kind of boil up. And with the you can only wear a mask until it doesn't fit you anymore. I think a lot of you were pretending that you didn't like this person beforehand probably in April or you kept telling yourself that you just you might like them but it was never going to work out you know there was just too much going on and you kind of put on a mask like that was all okay with you like it was no big deal which honestly Virgo you know that's you guys tend to wear a mask when it comes to your deep emotions you like to keep it to yourself and when you're at the boiling point you snap that's kind of how virgos process you know their emotions they first try logically then they have a mask so they can keep those emotions hidden to themselves and it's kind of like a um protective mechanism within themselves and then when that emotion becomes too strong instead of releasing it in a healthier manner they tend to try to stifle it even more and then it just kind of erupts it's quick it's fast then it's over and there might be a simmer period but that never feels good to you virgo so the best thing you can do is just try to communicate what's going on as it happens all right, Virgo, that was actually really beautiful. Obviously, I see some discomfort. I see some challenges in the month of May. But for the most part, you know, work-wise, financially, um, romantically, you know, in terms of your connections with your friends, your platonic connections, all of it is so positive. So if you've been dealing with a lot of struggles in April, I really see you moving out of majority of that into May and you're looking at a pretty beautiful month. All right, Virgo, that's all I have for you. Please like, share, and subscribe and comment down below and let me know if this resonates with you. I love you so much. Take care.